to please God. How can we please God? I'm going to explain this little photo in a moment. The first aspect of pleasing God is found in Hebrews 11 verse 6. It tells you there the most essential thing. If you're wanting a life that is wanting to please God, don't miss this because no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you work or every effort and strain of, of man's trying to be a Christian, it's going to fall dismally short. Friends, you can't work your way to heaven. There's nothing that you or I can do to deserve it by any works of our own. It tells you there in Hebrews 11, verse 6, but without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Spurgeon put it this way, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. To glorify God and enjoy him forever. Our essential purpose is to be pleasing to the one by whom we have been created. And Spurgeon goes on to say, for in doing so, in glorifying God and enjoying him forever, for in doing so, he will undoubtedly please himself. You know, as we learn to love him, to please him, to glorify him, to enjoy him, who is our Saviour and Lord, the one who's ransomed our soul from death and sin and hell and transformed our lives, as we learn to glorify him and enjoy him, we'll find that enjoyment, that deep satisfaction, that deep well-being, that deep fulfilment, as I say, that can only be found in knowing the Saviour. As we glorify him, we'll enjoy and we'll please ourselves as we please God. And it's a key, really, to finding fulfilment in life is to please God, to find those things in your life that you can put into your life that is going to rejoice the heart of God. Find some things that will bring a smile to God's face through this week ahead. Find something that will please His heart and you'll, be, you'll get a buzz out of it too as you think, wow, I've done something for the Saviour. Whether it's passing out a track, whether it's sharing a word of cheer and encouragement, of prayer for another, of, the, of taking the word and putting it into your heart and soul, then you're going to get some enjoyment on your inside as well. As you serve the Saviour, as you please the heart of God, you're going to get that deep fulfilment in your own life. You can delight the heart of God. As we please Him, as we come to God, as we believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Now to explain this little picture here. We've got a picture here of a fireman with a baby girl in his arms. And someone illustrated faith like this. The word faith. What does faith mean? We bandy it around and many have different definitions and thoughts about what faith really means. Think about it like this. That suppose there was a fire that broke out in the upper room, in the upper story, the second story of a house, a second, a two-story house. And suppose at that window of that house, as people on the street gather, they see a young girl, a young child on that second story of that house, looking out of the window in despair as the smoke is filling the air, as the flames are taking over this house that is burning down. How is she going to escape? How will she escape this dreadful situation? She can't leap down because... That would cause severe injury. And because of the fire, the window is her only way of escape. So out of the crowd comes a strong man that cries, Jump and I'll catch you. Trust me. Jump and I'll catch you. Trust me. It's a part of faith to know that the man is there. It's another part of faith to believe that the man is strong. But the essence of faith lies in the child letting go of the rail and dropping down into the man's arms, trusting that he will do what he has promised. That is the proof of faith. And it's like that too with salvation, with saving faith, with that trust that we receive Christ and we receive his salvation gift. We receive that work of his on our behalf in dying on the cross for our sins in receiving that gift that he extends because of that work on our part, 
on our behalf. And he tells you, he tells me, jump, jump into my arms, I'll catch you. You can trust me, I'm strong, I'll catch you and I'll save you. And faith is like that. What a picture that it is for us, that we can find that wonderful starting point of pleasing God. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So faith is critical, it's key. Jump into His arms today, if you've never done that before. And as believers too, we need to be resting in His arms and knowing that He's there to hold us. And if you want God's smile and favour, if you want fulfilment for your life, then find faith today. Find faith renewed. If you want the Lord to be pleased with you, seek Him, trust Him. He's going to reward you. And another thought around the theme of um, pleasing God, we see in this uh, one here, in Psalm 147 verse 11. Psalm 147 verse 11, it says, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear Him, in those that hope in His mercy. Fearing God is another aspect of pleasing Him. God will take pleasure in you as you fear Him, as you honour Him. What kind of life would the Lord want me to live that is going to please Him, that is going to bless Him? A life that is fearing Him and revering Him and honouring Him and giving Him the glory and the majesty that is due unto His glorious name. How can I please God? That is the question for you, for me, for everybody today. How do I do it? It's part and parcel of sometimes the very choices that we make, the loves that we have, the t way we spend our energies by the life that we live. And the Christian life is something that's lived out. It's lived out in the day by day as we put our feet in that pathway of walking. The Christian life is something that we live, that is alive, and in use every day. And it's evident in how we deal with other people. How we cope with life's trials and troubles. You know, stresses. We had some just trying to get this technology set up this morning. And I'm pulling my hair out. It's getting less and less every day. As we, we have these stresses and troubles at times. We're all human. But thank the Lord that through those times we can grow closer to the Lord, can't we? Through those times of testing, we know the Saviour is there to hang on to to hold us close. And as we deal with others, as we face life's challenges, we can learn to have those godly desires birthed in us and brought to life in us. That godly thinking, those godly motives, those godly priorities. And that, that desire will grow and get ever deeper, ever stronger. Another way we can please God is to pray. Learn how to pray. Not just in, in a, a shared time, but in a private time. Learn how to pray, to, to commune, to seek His face, to bring your petitions before Him. It tells us in Proverbs 15, verse 8, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is His delight. The prayer of the upright, the prayer of the righteous, God tells us, is His delight. Don't you want to delight the heart of God? Don't you want to bring delight and pleasure to God? To honour Him, to glorify Him? God is delighted when we come to Him in prayer. When we bring our needs to Him. When we pour out our heart to Him. When we recognise our absolute need of Him. And our, you know, we realise how insignificant we are in, in, in awe of Him. Of who He is and of what He wants us to be. And God creates a desire in us for godly things. For godly truth, a thirst for the things of God. As it tells us in 1 Peter 2, verse 2, it tells us that as newborn babes, desire, desire, crave, long for, desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. There's a desire that God gives us, a craving, a longing to be found in his presence, to be found prayerful, to be found reading. Studying, learning, growing in Christ. 